Welcome back. So, uh, the strange cloud had just attacked Rory, Tima, Billy, and James, and had reached into Rory's chest, and he couldn't get away. A tremendous roar shook the ground. The next instant, a blinding flash and burning wave of heat hit the creature, a searing wind of destruction that blasted through the thing, tearing it apart. Nerve-twisting death screams split the air, slammed into Rory, overloaded his brain, and dropped him into sweet black unconsciousness. When Rory opened his eyes, everything was quiet. He looked around, listening. Nothing unusual. He felt for a lump on the back of his head where he'd hit the ground. Nothing. Confused, he began to stand, sound to his right. Billy sitting up, rubbing his neck. Did you guys see... Tima moaned like a cloud with a bad attitude. Must have been something in the woods, said James. I smelled burning plastic. That was more than plastic, said Rory. It was alive, and it tried to... Couldn't be, said James firmly. Had to be some weird hallucination from the smoke. And we all had the same hallucination, asked Billy. You think we all got sweepy and fell night-night and had a big bad nightmare? All of us? Same dream? No way. It wasn't a dream voice spoke from the shadows. They spun around toward the sound. Billy grabbed a thick branch and held it like a club. Rory could tell Tima was in a judo stance, ready and watching. They stood their ground, ready to fight or try once more for the wall. Calm down, said the voice. I'm not the beastie. I saved you. Stepping from the shadows, the old man stepped in, stopped in front of the fire, keeping his distance. He could have climbed out of a history book on Native Americans. Loose, loose leather shirt and leggings, gray hair pulled into two long braids, large, dark eyes, and a wide mouth. Corners turned up slightly, trying to hide a smile. Carved stone, square, uh, carved square stone hung from a thong around his neck. Name's Bella Rai, he said. Bell, like ding-dong, and aha, like a surprise, but put a little snot in it. Sorry about the attack. I didn't think they'd sense you so soon. Plus, I figured you'd be safe in your kiva. All of Rory's attention was fixed on the old man, like the rest of the world was pushed away. He couldn't see or even sense the others. Only he and Belaha were there. The Rory blinked, and the world seemed to spin. In a gentle but commanding voice, Belaha said, You better sit down, Tech. Uh, you're about to fall, and if I try and catch you, you'll get spooked. If I let you fall, you bang your head. Either way, you lose. Knees losing their strength, Rory slid down until he was sitting on the hard ground. The rocky surface felt safe and secure, very real after too much weirdness. He looked at the old man. What was that thing? Why did it try and kill me? Who are you? Belaha held up his hands, one at a time and not too much. Looks like you haven't decided whether to pee, puke, or pass out. Rory took a breath. Okay, what was that thing? An energy sucker. Feeds on the energy of living things and particularly likes to munch on people. They usually just take a sip now and then. That way they can keep feeding on a person for years. You call that sipping? yelled Rory, trying to stand. Belaha held up a hand in a calming gesture. I, I said usually. You're a special case. You it wanted to kill. Rory felt panic rising. Kill me? Why? Belaha shook his head. Too much to explain now. Important thing is, I got it before it told the others where you are. Others? shouted Rory, leaping up and heading for the side of the pit. There are more? How many? Where do they come from? He had to get home. Nice, safe, normal home. Belaha touched his shoulder. You'll never learn anything if you start shouting every time I tell you something. Rory jerked away. What? That, that, that thing just about ripped my heart out of my chest, and there more? I got every reason to... Belaha's body suddenly exploded upward. He towered over Rory. A sunlight glow burst from his center, nearly blinding Rory. Hush! Rory hushed. Belaha continued in a commanding roar. Pup, you got too much to learn too fast, and if you don't, you toast. Very messy toast. Most likely, you'll be dead meat in one, maybe two days. Shut your mouth and open your ears, and maybe, just maybe, you'll still be in one piece in a week. Rory's mouth gaped. 
Belaha, shrinking toward normal size, reached out and closed it. Belaha nodded. Better. He gestured toward the fire. We call them Crolodutes. Most people on this planet can't see them. But they've been here since before humans were fighting over bananas. They've grown, grown strong the last few thousand years, and now they're planning to take over. You and your friends are the last chance to stop them. Rory protested. I can't fight something like that. Why don't they leave me alone? I promise I won't try anything. Just leave me alone. He began to look around for a way to get out. Belaha shook his head, sadness in his eyes, and placed a hand on Rory's shoulder. You must try, because if you do not, they'll not rest until they've ripped you apart. They don't care if you fight or not. They only want, their only want is your death. After you, they'll feast on your friends. Finally, they'll finish their destruction of everything and everyone on this planet. The worst thing is that you probably can't stop them. You're probably already dead, just waiting to fall. There's only one small chance. That is, if all of all four of you work together, and we all are very lucky. Rory suddenly remembered James, Billy, and Tima. He broke his gaze from the old man and looked around. A glowing fog filled the hole. Through it, he could barely see the others, frozen in place. Fear rising again, he looked back at Belaha. What did you do to them? Let them go! didn't do anything to them, Tekta. You and I have stepped out of your world for this conversation. They're the same. Think of this as being between moments of time. That doesn't make sense. How can you... Belaha shook his head. I'm not going to explain it now, Tekta. It's been a long night for you, so let me stick to the essentials. There's a thing that needs doing, and you, and only you, can take the first step. Take that step, and you might survive. Might. You decide, the others will come too. Either way, it's in your hands. What do you want me to do? Tell the others. Make the choice. State your intention. The rest will follow. Rory looked at this mysterious old man with the impossible story and shook his head. This is not turning out to be the evening I expected. A grim, grim smile tucked at, uh, tugged at Belaha's mouth. Don't you like surprises? Rory shot him a look. How come you know all this? Belaha winked. Well, the first reason is that I'm wise beyond my years, and that's saying a lot. The second reason is I'm a watcher. What's that? Belaha rolled his eyes. Hmm, a watcher. What would a watcher do? Let me think. In an instant, his body disappeared, leaving just his eyes floating before Rory, quickly growing into huge, glowing orbs. Belaha's voice boomed from the darkness. I watch, bright boy. The ground shook with his words, and Rory felt dizzy. I've been watching and planning for over 5,000 years, and if you can't activate the stone by the next full moon, we don't get another chance. Tag. You're it. With that, the eyes exploded into whizzing, whistling streams of color spinning out in all directions. Rory stared at the color shooting by, and for the second time that night, he fainted. And that's chapter one. We'll record chapter two soon. See you then.